Hello, everyone. Mark Busich of Hudson County View. Thanks again for joining us on this recent installment of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. Uh, we have, uh, as we have the previous weeks, we have a lot to do uh, to uh, discuss today. Uh, the first uh, segment that we'll be bringing to you uh, soon, right after this introduction, is newly emerged a video of a fight that occurred at a uh, Dirty Boswick Avenue last week. And uh, because of that video, there was a uh, press conference held by uh, local community activists in Jersey City calling for the um, uh, temporary suspension of a police officer who wielded a baton to try to break up the fight. Um, and so we'll have video of that. We'll also be getting to uh, news uh, happening uh, at a condominium, the James Monroe condominium in the Newport section of Jersey City, whereby uh, the board president, Pat Amplani, supposedly fired a worker for uh, stealing what uh, residents there at the building are saying are a set of master keys. And he fired the employee, Juan Reyes, and residents are claiming that uh, this particular action by the board president, Padman Palani, is an attempt to uh, bust the union. So we'll get to that story. Uh, we'll also be talking about the, uh, in Jersey, also in Jersey City, the uh, local chapter of the NAACP, Jersey City chapter, that is, held a press conference on Monday in the Greenfield section of the city. Uh, and we were there to film the and produce a live broadcast of that press conference. Uh, the NAACP is claiming that um, what was formerly Fulton Avenue Park is now being bulldozed to make way for a parking lot. And they fear that a nearby building, which they claim uh, there are uh, under the radar uh, services being conducted for the Orthodox Jewish community. And their argument is that when uh, when a new religious organization is about to be constituted in the city, well, they need access to um, to parking. Uh, and then we'll be talking, uh, heading a little bit north uh, for this segment, uh, talking about Union City, about how a property ma uh, services group uh, is wanting to repeal ordinances that are on the books in Union City to uh, restrict or to put in place a rent freezes and eviction notices. So the, those are just some of the stories we'll be getting to uh, on this May 14th show. Please uh, stay with us and we'll get we'll be right back with you. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub. With health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy. Here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Hello, everyone. Mark Boosinch again of Hudson County View Live. As you can see, this is the video footage uh, that was recently acquired by Hudson County View uh, showing the brawl that happened at a 30 Boswick Avenue last week. And as we stated right at the outset of the broadcast, uh, activists within the community are calling for the temporary suspension of a police officer who can be seen in the video wielding his baton against uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the 
people there who are fighting. Uh, and that particular video, just to show you how uh, much it, to give you an indication of how viral this video went online on the Hudson County View Facebook page. Uh, so far, there's been up to, it reached about 9 million people uh, so far, and it's received just over 3 million views. And um, you can see why it's proven so popular, because uh, obviously it, it, it's clearly showing uh, how the fight unfolded at 30 Boswick Avenue. Um, now, they, as we said at the start of the broadcast, activists within the community are saying that uh, they want to see a suspension of the police officer who wielded a baton. And in fact, uh, the Jersey City Anti-Virus Coalition director, Pamela Anderson, said, Anderson said that um, um, that the, or Johnson rather, Pamela Johnson, I'm sorry for that, said that uh, the whipping sound of that baton reminded her uh, could prove to be uh, bring back a lot of trauma for the residents in that city. In fact, she said that it, it was uh, reminding uh, a sound that was uh, used against uh, her grandmother and grandfather. Uh, th these were her words uh, uh, from years ago. Um, but let's now, we want to make sure that we bring up the video uh, press conference uh, of the activists who called, uh, who called for a press conference on Monday to get their response. Let's go to that video clip right now. These are my friends. And when my friends are attacked, it's not political. It's just basically giving them a voice and speaking on their behalf. Because this family has lost loved ones through violence inside of the street. And then on Tuesday, they saw members of their family being beaten. How much trauma and how much stress can a family take? So what you need to know, this world needs to know, and the tri-state area needs to know that we're human. And we do not deserve that type of treatment and response from this city, from police officers, or, for the, or, or from anybody. So I say to my friend Stephen Filler, when you get on national TV and you suggest that videos are being manipulated and it's not the actual video, we know and understand that. But we also know and understand that the tone you're trying to dictate to the people who's in charge of reviewing the case. Again, if it's a process, let it play out. We don't need to hear from the police chief or the public safety director saying that actions was justified. That's not even within your jurisdiction to make the claim on. I want everybody uh, to listen to those, vi those videos again because that hard whipping sound reminded me of the sound that my grandmother and my grandfather told us how they was whipped by their slave masters. That could bring back a memory that none of us want to relive. Whether we were there or not, we heard the stories of what happened to brown and black people. We see in America every day how brown and black people are treated, unarmed black men gunned down in the street. We want the body cam. We want the full circle of the story, and we want that release to the public. We are asking that the officer who inflicted that pain and who waved that baton, that person is disciplined or suspended for his actions. And I'm going to tell you this. As an educator, if a teacher had malpractice, they would be inside of an upper room. They would be disciplined. They wouldn't be in the classroom. How long do we take officers who abuse their power and how often he's back on the force as of today? We ask for the county um, prosecutor to please look into removing him until this investigation is over. And if it's deemed necessary for him to continue to have discipline actions, please give it to him. But as of right now, it's unfair that he's sitting back on duty as if nothing has happened. Uh, we uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that press conference. Uh, as you heard from uh, the Jersey City Anti Coalition, uh, from the director of the Anti jo Jersey City Coalition Movement uh, Executive Director Pamela Johnson, uh, saying that uh, the whipping sound of that was uh, because of the baton used by the police officer reminded her of the stories that she heard from her grandmother and grandfather about how they were whipped by their slave masters. So those are very strong words by Pamela uh, Johnson. Uh, we're going to be going to commercial break soon. And when we come back, we'll be going to another city in Jersey City about the NAACP. Uh, and they held a press conference uh, near Fulton Avenue Park on Monday. We'll be right back.
Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friends Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport, live like you want. Mark Businch, Mark Businch again of uh, Hudson County View, live on a cut. Just want to give you a, a breakdown. Just make we didn't get a chance to mention this at the start of the broadcast, but the uh, we just really uh, found out about the recent COVID cases in the county. And we're not going to give a breakdown by the by the towns by this point, but just to give you the total number of cases and deaths, uh, sadly, up to this point. So according to the New Jersey Department of Health, as of 11:30 this morning, there are 17,035 cases and 1,007 deaths. So uh, uh, we wanted to at least provide that information that we uh, weren't able to at the start of the broadcast. But our next story has to, again, do, do with deal with uh, Jersey City. The NAACP chapter uh, in Jersey City held a press conference on Monday um, because they're claiming that the Fulton Avenue Park, which used to be a community garden, is now being, which we were there to film and live stream the event on Monday, is now being bulldozed to make way for a park lot. And according to the NAACP, the Reverend Nathaniel Legay saying, he explained to us that uh, the evidence that the NAACP has is that as far as that property being turned into a park parking lot and being, and being used by a religious organization is uh, the proof they have is that services are already being uh, are already being um, are ongoing at the building just next to the park uh, by the Orthodox uh, Jewish community. And according to uh, Nathan Legay, there's a city ordinance on the books uh, which states that uh, no religious organization can constitute itself within the city unless they have access to parking. So they believe that um, that indeed that the Fulton Avenue Park will be turned into a park lot. And so they were there with their lawyer, Yvette Sterling, on Monday, seeking injunction relief to, to uh, stop the, the uh, construction. Now, as I said, we, uh, we live streamed and we filmed the event, the press conference on Monday. We like to go to that video segment right now so you can hear directly from, uh, um, uh, as I interviewed Nathaniel Legay right after the press conference. Check out this video. along Fulton Avenue where just behind me is what used to be Fulton Avenue Park and there are construction vehicles in there right now paving it so that it'll eventually become a parking lot for a new synagogue that's supposed to open on MLK Drive in Fulton Avenue. Well the local NAACP chapter hopes to get an injunction to stop the construction of a new parking lot instead reclaim the park. Reverend, thank you so much for your time. Reverend, uh, you spoke about the need to preserve this park today and a little bit about its history, but it looks like they they made a lot of progress here with the construction. Are you concerned that you will get the injunction that you're looking for? We are very certain that when we get to court, we will get the injunction, that's correct. And, and we, we are hopeful that, that, uh, that the court will see things from our point of view that there's no reason for closing down this park and tearing it down and changing its use. It is a designated for a park, not a parking lot. 
there's a historical value for this park and we want to preserve it and we don't want it to be removed there is a reason why this park is being changed to a parking lot to make way for a, an incoming uh, 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 religious organization because there is an ordinance an ordinance here in, in Jersey City that says no new religious organization can be established without adequate parking space. So this is a way to turn uh, this park into a parking lot conveniently to pr pr provide space for this organization. And he may not agree, but there are many, uh, 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 many ways that we can, we can verify that. If he wants us to bring the information out, we can do that. But, but, but this park, there's no reason for it to be changed. $500,000 was allocated for this park for three years or more. That money was never spent. The money was transferred to Barrel Lane Park on, on Garfield Avenue. It had been improved with the intention of returning that money to rebuild and reconstruct this park, not as a parking lot, but as a park. Now, if the money was not available, it would be a, another problem, but we do have the funds, and we just want this park to remain as a park for this community. That's all we're asking for. Mark Boosnich reporting in Jersey City for Hudson County View, the Most eye of the community. Most women who give birth recover without problems, but any woman can have complications after the birth of a baby. Learn the post-birth warning signs, such as fever, headache, chest pain, shortness of breath, increased bleeding, or thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. Knowing these can save your life or the life of someone that you love. Trust your instincts. If you feel something is wrong, call and get evaluated by your healthcare provider. If your symptoms get worse or you do not hear back from your physician, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Pena Pinto Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521 9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Hello again, everyone. Mark Boos, Central Hudson County View. Uh, thanks again for participating in this recent installment of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. Um, we want to talk about uh, a story that's uh, ha occurring uh, over at the James and Merle Condominium building in New down at uh, the Newport section of Jersey City. Uh, on April 20th, 28, that is, about 11 workers, uh, porters, handymen, and concierge and doormen with the property, New York-based Property Services Union, uh, 32BJ, uh, held a one-day strike because they claim that uh, management there is uh, unfairly bargaining. And, um, and the community co-op board is led by a gentleman named Padman Palani. And then uh, we wrote a story just yesterday uh, after hearing from residents who uh, some of them who because of the strict stay at home orders weren't even aware that the one day strike occurred on April 28th. But but some of them told us that, uh, well, right after that strike took right after that one day strike took place on April 28th, uh, Padman Palani then turned around and fired uh, one of the workers, Juan Reyes, claiming that he stole a set of master keys. And as a result of that, the uh, con condominium board had to then change locks for different entrances to utility rooms and even some of the condo uh, condo apartments. Um, but that's not the way his family uh, sees it. His family says now apparently uh, apparently there's video footage of Mr. Reyes uh, putting his hand in his pocket. But while the condo board says that the keys were master keys were missing for three days. Uh, a fellow worker of uh, Juan Reyes, Barbara Caligo, Cali 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 rather, sorry, uh, said that she found the key in the packaging. It happened to be um, there's a building link um, uh, uh, where uh, other member uh, where some of the workers are able to place their keys, and apparently the key fell behind one of this building link uh, board boxes 
And so it was discovered by her. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the uh, president, Padman Palani, is sticking to a story uh, that uh, Juan Reyes uh, uh, stole the keys and therefore remains fired. Now, some of the residents told us about uh, that the reason why Padman Palani wants to bust a union there is because um, he doesn't have enough money to pay them for a new contract. And um, some of them have said that the uh, that the board uh, authorized a million dollars worth in renovations, some of which hasn't even been finished yet. But because of all that money being spent on renovations, uh, Mr. Polani is turning around and saying that he can't afford uh, what the union is seeking in a new contract, which according from the according to the union's view, viewpoint, isn't anything extraordinary or outrageous than what they've asked before, maybe uh, from previous contracts that they've signed. Maybe they're asking for a little bit of a wage increase, but according to the residents there, uh, Mr. Polani and the board there, and the property manager is first service residential based out of Linders, and they are seeking a 20% uh, wage cut um, from in this new contract with the union, and they also want to seek, they all, they're they also seeking no paying no overtime pay after eight hours, obviously, um, you know, you pay overtime after 40 hours, but they don't want to pay overtime after eight hours. Uh, they want to see workers um, give up their seniority rights, uh, and they also want to convert their they want to convert their defined pension defined benefit pension plan into a 401k plan. And the board is also seeking uh, the ability to, to the ability to subcontract out work. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties there. Sorry about that. Um, but they want to have the ability to subcontract work out to a non-union entity. So uh, that will be following that story closely, uh, but uh, it still remains to be seen whether or not Juan Reyes uh, gets his job back. Um, so when we um, we uh, we have another story to talk about uh, in Union City, as well as uh, the New Jersey uh, New Jersey Transit related story related to a new uh, power plant that they want to install in Kearney. So uh, when we get back from the, this upcoming commercial break, uh, we'll get to those stories as soon as we get back. Stay tuned. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. You know those times when you need to see the doctor, but you just can't get to the doctor? So where do you go? Go to the App Store, download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health, and you see the doctor right away. From any mobile device, whenever you want, wherever you are. Quality care. No appointment necessary. The doctor is online when you download the Telemed app. Don't you feel better already? RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Hello, everyone. Again, Mark Busich of Hudson County View. Uh, thanks again for uh, being with us on this uh, recent installment of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. Story we want to we want to get to pertains to uh, Union City. Uh, Union City recently uh, passed ordinances that calls for a rent and a rent freeze, and also uh, prevents the evictions for uh, residents and commercial properties during this current pandemic. Obviously, but. Uh, a coalition of property owners are not uh, in favor of that. Uh, they think that there's already executive orders. There's already state law and executive orders signed by Governor Phil Murphy that says uh, that uh, those those um, those type of features already are on the books. Uh, so we just want to read a quote. Uh, uh, read a quote from the Property Service uh, Coalition uh, that's opposed to this uh, new ordinance. Uh, restricting, uh, putting in place rent freezes and restricting evictions from residential and commercial properties during this current pandemic. So, for example, uh, the this is uh, the spokesman for the Union City Property Housing Initiative is Ron Simon Simoncini, and according to the lawsuit that they filed in court. Uh, they claim that this action, and I'll just read this uh, particular quote here, this action is a facial constitutional challenge to two recently enacted ordinances that broadly and impermissibly violate the plaintiff's constitutional rights in the guise of addressing the public interest. They go on to say, 
the fruit ordinance is arbitrary, capri capric capricious and unreasonable and violates the constitutional right of equal protection of laws and impairs the right of contract and constitutes an unconstitutional taking without just compensation. So obviously the Union City Property Housing uh, Initiative isn't happy with the laws that are in the books uh, that were recently passed by the city of Union City. But in return, uh, Union City Mayor and Senator Brian Stack, uh, Union Senator of the 33rd uh, Legislative District, uh, he had uh, strong words uh, as far as his reaction, getting his reaction to this lawsuit that was brought forth by the Union City Property Housing Initiative. He said in turn, and we'll read his quote, you just bear with us for a moment. Uh, I am personally disgusted that some landlords in, the Union, in Union City have formed an initiative, quote unquote, under the pretense that they are trying to assist tenants when in reality they are looking to challenge a moratorium on rental increases during the pandemic. So those are really uh, strong words by uh, Union City Mayor Brian Stack and also Senator of the uh, 33rd uh, Legislative uh, uh, District. Um, the next story that we like to get to before our uh, commercial break is has to do with the New Jersey Transit uh, wanting to uh, build out a 140 megawatt uh, power plant uh, near the uh, northeast corridor in Kearney. Uh, obviously, many uh, probably of you travel, well, obviously with the pandemic, uh, not as much as we used to, but the northeast corridor is a 457-mile route uh, between Boston and, and Washington, D.C., and it hosts about it has about 70 Amtrak stations and about 78, 30 Amtrak stations and about 78 commuter stations along that whole 457 mile route. And, but according to uh, New Jersey Transit, they need to build out this new, they need to build out this new uh, power plant because it has to, because of increasing intensity and frequency of severe weather, which leads to outages because the whole border, remember, is electrified. So both New Jersey Transit trains and Amtrak trains, uh, their engines are electrified along that uh, busy corridor. And so they want to be able to um, uh, they want to be able to power that corridor bet uh, between New York Penn Station and Newark uh, so that uh, there's no obviously no um, interruption in power or, or else that uh, or else the service would be severely uh, interrupted. Um, but the environment, some environmental groups are not happy with uh, this decision by New Jersey Transit to go ahead and build out this new power plant. Uh, Jeff Tittle, who's the president of the New Jersey chapter of the Sierra Club, said that, well, New Jersey Transit should be looking for uh, other kind of uh, alternative, uh, pro uh, alternative options for this project, some that maybe aren't, uh, aren't uh, fossil fuel based. He didn't specify he didn't specify uh, what kind of uh, other alternative outside of uh, fossil fuel could be used for this plant, uh, but nonetheless, he's voiced his criticisms. Uh, as as predict predictably, though, as it comes down to some, as is usual with some of these projects of this nature, uh, where sometimes environmental groups are pitted against labor unions and, and vice versa, well, the labor unions are strongly in favor of this project because obviously it would... Uh, it, would, it would entail the employment of po possibly hundreds of uh, building tradesmen and tradeswomen to build out this project. But uh, Jeff Tittle, again, thinks that New Jersey Transit should have, in fact, he believes that New Jersey Transit should have given more information to the public. But New Jersey uh, Transit spokeswoman Nancy Snyder says, well, there were public hearings held uh, recently at St. Peter's University, one during the, in the afternoon and one at night where uh, the public could have had the opportunity to voice their concerns if they had any to this project. So we're about to get to a commercial. Uh, actually, our segment is ending. Our show is ending already. That's how fast it went. We want to thank you again for participating with us on this recent installment of Hudson County View Live and a Cut. We'll see you next week. Thanks again.